patterns and pattern making have been a crucial aspect of my long engagement with design, architecture, science, art, and more recently visual music. I'll be including just a few statues of my visual music in this short presentation. I've now realised that the seeing of patterns, the making of patterns, and the recognition of patterns are all pivotal in providing a common thread linking both natural events and much of what is discovered through the processes of art and science. At the cosmic level, order or pattern occurs as the result of the unexpected triumph of natural selection, acting not alone, but together with the emergence over billions of years of self-organized systems. Such systems spontaneously generate much of the order of the natural world. Stuart Kaufman calls this order for free. In the early 1950s, when, on the day they first perceived the double helix of DNA, Watson and Crick announced to astonished drinkers in a Cambridge lunchtime pub that they had solved the mystery of life, this was at most a half-truth. They had indeed found an undergirding pattern which impacted directly on processes of natural selection. But the realisation came only later that the geometry by which chromosomes are arranged in the nucleus of every living cell had emerged over eons of time from a system of self-organisation. My own foray into systems of self-organisation was prompted by Turing patterns. In a piece of visual music called Turing Alila, I celebrated Alan Turing's work on morphogenesis by perturbing Turing patterns to reveal processes of self-organisation reminiscent of those found in nature. Let's look at what happens in just one movement from Turing Alila. You'll have seen in that short excerpt an extraordinary diversity of forms emerging seemingly spontaneously from my image sequences. It seems that in Turing Alila I discovered a purposeful tool for simulating natural processes. After I completed the piece I got to know Professor Jeremy Green. He's that rare exception, a biologist who has fully embraced the concept of self-organisation in regulatory networks occurring in tandem with the chance outcomes of Darwinian selection. He gave me some insight into how Turing's work on morphogenesis was just part of his search for the mathematical basis of how we think, how human intellectual abilities can be replicated using artificial neural networks. Little did Jeremy know at the time that it was his comments on Turing Alila that prompted my interest in discovering the patterns that underlie how our brains work. Earlier, I'd come under the spell of Igor Alexander, Professor of Neural Engineering at Imperial College London. He regarded the brain as being dependent on an unexplored form of engineering, one inspired and controlled by an astonishingly intricate structure or architecture. It was these twin influences, therefore, from the realms of biology and engineering that set me on course to explore for myself the astonishingly intricate pattern that underlies our ability to think. To find a clue, I turned to Islamic geometry. Islamic designs can not only confound the eye of the beholder with their complexity, but also they can provide a geometric clue to solving complex spatial problems. Further, they generate networks where the lines of the mathematical scheme can be regarded as a system of neural communication. By taking a very small section of the brain, as an example, we can begin to see a pattern producing a multitude of ribbons that interweave one with another in designs of dazzling complexity. You can see here the radiating centres or hubs of my chosen pattern generating a multitude of interconnecting ribbons or axons. Of course, we all know that the brain's grey matter doesn't present this degree of geometric precision. But when the same pattern is distorted, as if by the brain's dewy or hills, 
and Solchi values, we see something much more random. Such distortions, or synaptic ballets as I call them, form the basis of a recent piece of visual music called brainwaves. Of course, all of that was a conjecture. A shot in the dark in defining our brain's geometric pattern. But Jeremy liked the Islamic parallel. He had questions, as you see here, but was generous in accepting that a disruptive idea from the world of art could act as a trigger. A trigger which, in providing a plateau of lucidity, might be able to assist in moving processes of research and innovation forward. Clearly, my conjecture was not a conclusion, but potentially just another step towards making the invisible visible. In his own work at the Green Laboratory, Jeremy is concerned in how complex anatomy emerges from the simplicity of just a single fertilised egg. When he and I and others shared a platform at a recent EVA London conference, he explained his process of research and discovery. He compared his method to that of an artist wrestling with the constraints of a medium, whatever it might be, as a creative act that brings out novelty and insight. The idea that an answer to extreme complexity lies in the continual testing of data against a preconceived model or pattern, and then, if it doesn't fit, trying again, exactly describes my own method of work as a new media artist, and for that matter, the method of many other new media artists. You'll ask, I think, did my Islamic pan match the data? This is where the story gets interesting, a story I tell in my accompanying paper. All I can mention now is that recent discoveries into how our brains work have revealed the presence of cliques and cavities. These bear some close resemblance to the hubs of my Islamic pan. It's a similarity that must be regarded as coincidental, of course but nonetheless remarkable. You can see here that the hubs of my chosen Islamic pattern require a clique acting in 11 dimensions to provide maximum information flow linking all 83 regions of the brain. To conclude, I now find that the creative processes of art and science are similar to the point of being synonymous. New media artists think and create like scientists. Scientists think and create like new media artists. And the digital tools of discovery they each use are one and the same. Scientists and artists alike share the same patternist route in uncovering emergent self-regulatory order. My own patterns, which link the tensions of music with the complexities of natural systems, are not in themselves the answer. More. They are a starting point for gaining understanding and formulating action. Thank you for watching and listening.